Ah. Cheers to you, Coke. Nectar of the gods. If only I had something good to eat. Or even an idea or direction to ah. go. It's the Chopped Cookbook. Hello and welcome to FM Review. I'm your host, Freddie Robinson, and in this video I'll be reviewing the Chopped Cookbook. To start off, I'll just go over the cosmetics of the cookbook. First of all, it is a hardback edition. It has the reflective chopped writing on the front and on the spine. And it's very well constructed. Just to give you an idea of the size of this book, I have the typical Food Network magazine and I'll put them side by side. And then I can turn it sideways and give you a look of how thick the book is. In all, this book has 240 pages, and it's divided into 14 sections if you count the introduction and index. For the most part, the book is set up where it has an illustration of the dish on one page and the ingredients and how to prepare it on the next page. And now I'll go inside the book and show you the pages and the recipes to get your own opinion of if you want this book or not. Here you have the basket which holds the mystery items chopped page. Illustration tells you that it is the cookbook. Copyright 2014. And you have the contents here. And here's your introduction. And it gives you a little bit of the backstory of the show. Another nicely illustrated page. And it talks a little bit about the chopped pantry. It gives you the basics, richness, in case you wanted to add cheese, yogurt, mayonnaise, something of that sort, that texture to it. And you jump right into the first real section, which is pasta night, and it just goes over different pasta dishes. So here you have, it gives you your serving size, four to six, the active time, 15 minutes, and the total time is 35 minutes. Then it goes into giving you a brief summary, your ingredients, and the steps that you would take to prepare the sauce, cook the pasta, toss, and serve. And the same thing on the next two pages. You have the name of the dish, the serving size, the active time, the total time, as well as the ingredients and the steps that you take to prepare it. And you go over to your spinach and artichoke dip mac and cheese and the same thing goes on and here you have one page that has the illustration of the Mexican spaghetti and meatballs and then the page that tells you the ingredients and how you would prepare it and this is basically the format that goes on throughout the book play with your pasta here's some different ideas Same thing with another pasta dish. So you get the picture. Now you have the next section which goes with chickens gone wild. And again you have the basic format where it gives you the name of the dish, the ingredients, and the steps to prepare it. An illustration and still some ideas on preparing the dish. Greek spice wings and potatoes with yogurt dipping sauce. Saucy Moroccan chicken and lemon with date couscous. And this page actually has a question to Jeffrey Zakarian, what is your most off the beaten path pantry ingredient? And he replies, I love preserved lemons. And I guess that's why they have the lemon on top there. Here you have the Singapore 
chicken fried rice and an illustration and this would give you something similar to how the show is set up where you have the four mystery item ingredients the apples, the almond butter, the boneless chicken breast and the kale and then it gives you a read up of what you would make with those items the grilled chicken sandwich with parsley pesto Here's one with Marcus Samuelson, and the question for him is, what dish should every cook master? And he replies, whole roasted chicken because there is something that brings satisfaction to everyone. So you get to know the judges on the show through these pages when they ask him those questions. Now you're moving on to the egg section, and this is eggs after breakfast. And here you have it with an illustration of what it would look like. Meat and potato. Swiss chard baked eggs. Cheddar kale souffle. Have fun with your frittata. And it tells you a frittata, a baked Italian style omelet. And it just gives you some ideas of things to do with that. Philly style garlicky greens and egg sandwich. And then there you have an illustration of what it looks like. Eggs poached in martini marinara. And here's a tip. Eggs turn leftover sauces, stews, or sauteed vegetables into a filling and almost new meal. Flash in a pan. And it looks like it's something to do with meats. Then you have your page illustrating all the dishes that it'll be talking about in this section. First of all, you have the salsa marinated skirt steak soft tacos with refried white beans. And in this page, it asks Mark Murphy the question of what is your kitchen guilty shortcut? and he replies with canned beans. So that naturally makes canned beans acceptable since he uses them. Raise the cheese steak and it just gives you some ideas and things right there. Then it gives you an illustration and it's making me hungry just look through this. Here you have Ted Allen his question is, what is your dream chopped basket? Ted says, my dream chopped basket probably won't ever happen. New York strip steak and potatoes. Buttery basted flat iron steak with tomato butter sauce and parsley noodles. And that looks good. Italian yogurt. Gyros, euros, however it's pronounced, or however you choose to pronounce it, with yogurt and tomato. Ten fun pan sauces. Here you have pretzel, mustard, crusted pork tenderloin sliders. And they asked the question to Chris Santos, what is your kitchen guilty shortcut? He says using store-bought mayonnaise to make any flavored aioli. Here they ask Manette Chauhan, if I said that right, what is your most indispensable kitchen tool? She says my microplane. I use it every time for spices, 
to ginger garlic lemon zest. It's a small tool that has the power to unleash big flavors. So that's maybe one tip you can add when you're cooking. Ramp up your pot roast. Italian fennel, goulash, beer and onion. Complete fun ways to cook vegetables. So it looks like there's quite a few things in this section. Getting good vegetables. And here's a section that gives you the vegetable name, what you want to look for, and how to store it, plus the bonus that it gives you for ingesting it. Look for a firm, uniform shape and size. Not too big, with bushy, lush tops. And that's what you want to look for when you're trying to find beets. As a bonus, it gives you potassium. Bell peppers gives you vitamin C. And you want to look for brightly colored, heavy ones with smooth stems, taut skin, and no browning around the stem. And you want to store it in the refrigerator for up to four days. And then here you have the beet dishes. Bell pepper, Brussels sprouts, broccoli, carrots, cauliflower, celery, corn, and here you have Scott Conant. What is your most off the beaten path pantry ingredient? And he says coconut milk. Mushrooms. Green beans. Potatoes. Romaine lettuce. Tomatoes. Butternut squash. Zucchini. And now you have all things beyond ground or all things ground beyond beef and here you have the list of what all the dishes will be Cajun spiced burgers pork and egg stir fry with broccoli pork barbecue meatball sandwich and here's a tip pickled jalapeno brine Adds tangy heat to sauces and brightens up sautéed greens and salad dressings. Shepherd's stew with dumplings. Make over your meatloaf. Meat and collards pizza. Thai turkey lettuce wraps. Turkish chicken tacos. Now we have the next section which is big salads, hearty and fresh. You have a bib cob salad, nutty tropical kale and rice salad, spicy taco salad. And then you have a go-to guide for salad dressings. Here you have a nutty tropical kale with rice salad and it looks real good. spicy taco salad with your ingredients and the steps you need to prepare it. Then it's the go-to guide for vinaigrettes and salad dressing. And it talks about homemade dressings and vinaigrettes. Then it gives you an area where it tells you how to make those. Another chart. And that salad does look good. Chopped panzanella. Tuna and roasted potato salad with avocado buttermilk dressing. Roasted shrimp cocktail salad. Curried roasted vegetable and couscous salad. And now you go on to the fishing for compliments. And I'm guessing this is fish or either fish and other seafoods. Tilapia, tilapia, 
tilapia tartar cakes, marinated tilapia tacos, Here's a question for Amanda Freitag. What is your most off the beaten path pantry ingredient? She says, I always have a tube of harissa in my fridge. I love that flavor and the changes and it changes a dish instantly when you just add a little. And here's another setup to where it would be like you're opening the mystery basket getting the items. Arctic char, wonton wrappers, cream corn, and watercress. Slow cooked salmon with olive bread crumb sprinkle. Shrimp ramen. And in this one, it actually calls for a package of ramen noodles. So they actually can taste good. Connecticut Cajun Shrimp Rolls. And here's a question for Aaron Sanchez. What is always in your freezer? And he says, I always keep wild-caught gulf shrimp in my freezer for a quick and easy dinner. That's the Latin Authority, by the way. Here you have great grains, and it says grains are a fantastic food to have on hand. Three onion farro soup, cooking grains, there are several ways to cook grains perfectly tender, and another chart. Alex Garnaschelli, what is the most misused chopped ingredient? And she says arugula. It often gets tossed in the mix as a way to tie many odd ingredients together. But arugula can be very distinctive. It can actually end up taking over and leaving other ingredients hidden. So remember the bee goes sparingly with arugula. Stuffed peppers with wheat berries. It actually looks good finger food or maybe an appetizer. Roasted carrot and onion risotto. Chorizo and chicken brown rice paella. Paella? One of those. It looks pretty good. Kind of has a Thanksgiving look to it. Mushroom and cream cheese baked polenta. Has a dessert look to it. Short and sweet easy desserts. And here you have melted ice cream chocolate mousse. To me, if it doesn't have chocolate in it, it's not a dessert. And so does this one, because that looks like chocolate on the pizza. Warm salted caramel banana pudding. Thin lemon pancakes with sweetened sour cream and blueberries. Here you have mocha brownies with coffee and cinnamon. So it's a double shot of coffee. Should get you woke up and prepared for the day. And here you have some other ideas, hints and such things. Not enough chocolate for me. And you have your acknowledgments and index. The U.S. price is $27.50, whereas the Canadian price is $32. For the most, 
for the most part, the book has one page that shows the actual. What is that? A dish, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Here it is. Mushroom brownies with coffin, coffee, and cinnamon. Mushroom.